is this? <laughs> Who is this, Eva? Joy. What's her name? Joy. Joy? That's her name, Joy. Hello, Joy. We have a new companion today. Hello, Joy. Hmm? Is Joy going to join us? Yeah. Okay. You will take care of her, okay? You better tell her not to make noise, okay? Oh, she's not making noise. Oh, that's, oh, that's a toy. Oh, she's a toy. Okay, so she's not gonna make noise. Okay, so you take care of her. Okay, so she doesn't make noise. Okay, Eva. Mm. Okay, we better begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst instruct the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, so who can tell me what's the feast of December 8? Okay, the complete, the complete title of the feast is the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Okay. It is a solemnity. So that's uh, every time that the liturgical feast is named a solemnity. Uh, well, that is because it's, it is a very solemn feast. It is a very important feast in the church that it is celebrated with solemnity. Okay. Uh, with, with all the... Uh, the um, trimmings of a very very special celebration liturgically okay so it also will tell us that it is a very big feast in fact it is a holiday of obligation okay for us to uh, commemorate this feast or this solemnity we we are uh, obliged to to actually go to mass okay so the gospel for the solemnity of the immaculate conception is taken from St. Luke chapter 1 verses 26 to 38. Okay? Um, we all know the story of this particular uh, gospel. It's about the calling of Our Lady. It's about Our Lady's vocation. So we'll read part of it. Um, not, not the entire gospel. We'll read part of it. And it goes, The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. And he will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. Okay, let's review. Let's cut it off from there. Let's review what the Immaculate Conception is all about. Eh? What is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception and what are we celebrating? Anybody? When Mary... Our mother Mary was conceived in the womb of Saint Anne, her mother, and what was so special about that? Huh? She was conceived without sin, okay? conceived without original sin, and as a consequence of not having original sin, when there she has no sin whatsoever, right? And that is a dogma of faith, and a dogma means. It is a truth of faith that we are all obliged to believe as part of our faith. Okay? So our Lord, I mean, our lady was conceived from the very instance of her life, free of sin. Free of sin. Um, what are the consequences? Okay, free of original sin. Why? Because our first parents, Adam and Eve, well, contracted, committed, rather, original sin. Okay? Committed or the original sin. The sin that brought about many other sins afterwards. Right? 
So what are the consequences of original sin? What happened there when Adam and Eve uh, committed original sin? What happened? What happened to them? Can we, can we review that? Huh? Number one, huh? They fell out of grace, right? They fell out of grace. So they lost their state of if they if they if the sin they committed was the original sin, what was the state or situation of the soul that they lost by committing that sin? The state of grace or what's technically called the state of original justice. Okay? The state of original justice. Now, when we if we we have to understand the word justice there means really the state of original goodness. Okay? That they were good. That they were being good. They were full of grace. Okay? And they were called just. Which, in other words, is also, also means holy. Okay? So they're all, they have all the same meaning. The state of justice and the state of holiness, the state of goodness, that's all the same. All of that was the situation of Adam and Eve. But when they committed the original sin, that state of original justice, that state of original holiness disappeared when they fell into sin. What else happened with original sin? <laughs> What's that, Eva? Yeah? What else happened besides that? Okay, Sophia, human nature got broken. Okay? Human nature got broken. Sin, sin corrupted human nature itself. And since the complete, the completion, the entirety, the totality of human nature was in Adam being the first man, okay, when he committed that original sin, his whole being got corrupted. His whole being got destroyed got very badly mangled, okay, to the point where you can't recognize this to be the man God created. And since all of that entirety of human nature was in Adam, all the offsprings of Adam, which means all the other human beings that came forth from Adam and Eve, contracted, okay? Now, there's a difference here between contracting and committing. Adam and Eve committed original sin, but the offspring of Adam and Eve contracted original sin, meaning they just inherited it. It became part of their broken nature, of our broken nature. Okay, And as a consequence of that corruption of human nature itself, then that nature now suffers what? What's the biggest uh, evidence and proof of corruption of human nature. Death. Okay? Very good, Sophia, right? Death. So, loss of the state of original justice, uh, the corruption of human nature, um, which, and, and death comes with that. Uh, and then there's another thing. Because of all of that original sin, that human nature now became inclined to sin. So we now carry within us the inclination to be sinning. Okay? And that is the reason why we have to fight. Because if we don't fight, our nature is such that it, it's, it's tainted, it's stained with sin. And if we don't fight to live the virtues, well, our own human nature will be tugging us to commit sin. It will be dragging us to commit sin. That is why we fight temptations that is why we fight to be holy that's why we fight to stay in the in the in the state of grace and that's why we go to confession as often as we can because that is how, how we recognize our sinful nature and that we recognize the need for the grace to help us preserve ourselves in the state of grace okay and there's another thing by the way that that is a consequence of original sin and that is well we we broke our relationship with god right we broke our relationship with God, and so, um, and so that's why um, you know God God uh, became alien to to man, 
Okay? Uh, all of a sudden, man could not quite recognize uh, God. Not because God is unrecognizable, but precisely because of the corruption that, that uh, entered into, into man himself. Okay, now Our Lady was exempt from all of that. Uh oh <laughs> Our Lady was exempt from all of that, right? She was born uh, uh, without all of those consequences of original sin. Okay? She was sinless. She was not, okay, somebody wants to climb up here. She was free from all of those consequences of original sin. Okay? Now, uh, and you see, God, God being God, he could very well do whatever he wants to do, right? He has all the power to do what he wants to do. And he deigned it necessary to exempt his own mother from the stain of original sin. And so he created her free of that, uh, of that sin. So he wanted to prepare uh, his son's own uh, mother to be the purest, the most perfect of all his creatures in order to be worthy to carry the Son of God in her womb and, and bring forth uh, uh, the Savior of the world. Okay. Now, our Lord, of course, uh, was promised already right from Genesis, right from the time that Adam and Eve committed original sin. Our uh, God already, God the Father already promised the salvation of mankind. When he told them, well, I'm going to put enmity, talking to the devil, I'm going to put enmity between you, you Satan, you serpent, and the woman. Okay? Between your seed and her seed, meaning your offsprings, your, you know, uh, uh, your, your ilk, and, the, and uh, the offspring of this woman. And he is going to uh, um, break your, your head with her heel, with his heel. I'm, I'm distracted here because Eva is uh, doing all sorts of things. Anyway, um, so that was already promised, right? Right from uh, um, Genesis. And the fulfillment of that precisely came through Our Lady and the incarnation of the second person of the Blessed Trinity, which we are anticipating this time of Advent, right? It is precisely within this season. That's why it's so beautiful that the Immaculate Conception, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, comes just right at the heels of Christmas, right? Just right before uh, Christmas, a few weeks to Christmas. And that is why it is a very, very nice and very opportune time, this Advent, for us to try to be very close to Our Lady, to try to imagine Our Lady preparing for the birth of her son, to try to recall and use our memory and, and, and uh, imagine how how uh, she received her vocation to be the mother of God, which is the gospel today, precisely we're reading, and how she went to visit Elizabeth, and how she must have had all the anxiety uh, inside of her, not because she lacked faith, but because she, as a young girl of 14, 15 years old, well, inexperienced with life and all that, she didn't know much about what to do, right? Uh-oh, <laughs> come here. You want to come here? Okay. She didn't know much about what to do. That is why the angel told her, uh, don't worry, he said, hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Right? Do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. And this is something also another, just on the side, something very important for us to, to understand and to realize. Okay? Many times when we are anxious in life, when, when we allow anxieties and fear and, and troubles to overcome us and to get the better of us, Okay? You know why that happens? Because many times we are not in good in the good graces of God. We are not in the good graces of God. That's why we are uncertain about the future of our soul. We are uncertain about the situation of our soul. We we, we become afraid of what may come what, what may come about, what might happen to our lives. Those things, those kinds of fears, those kinds of anxieties are a consequence of not being in the state of grace. Okay? Keep that in mind. Those kinds of fears and anxieties and insecurities are a consequence of not being in the state of grace. So that is why uh, the angel wanted to remind Our Lady 
Don't be afraid, Mary. You've found favor with God. You are in the good graces of God. There's nothing to fear. Okay? And I'm going to repeat that also to you and to all of you. <laughs> to everyone who up to now may be still afraid of COVID. <laughs> the, great, the great COVID fear that is still uh, 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 you know, threatening so many people in this world. Examine yourselves. Examine your consciences. And ask yourselves, are you in the good graces of God? Are you in the state of grace? Because as I have said 20 months ago when this COVID was still just beginning, I said, I think the, the fear that people have is not fear of COVID or fear of the virus. It's more fear of dying. They're afraid to die because they don't know the state of their soul. So they're afraid of this COVID because they don't want to die. Right? But people who are not afraid to die because... They know that they are trying to be in the good graces of God. I'm not saying you be presumptuous, okay? I am not at all advocating presumptuousness here. I'm not saying that we have to be, that we are self-assured that we are going to heaven. That's why we're not afraid. No, 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 that's not what I mean. What I'm trying to say here is, if you are trying, trying your hardest, trying your best to be in the state of grace, you know what? God will reward you. By removing that fear from you, removing the fear of dying, removing the fear from living a full life and removing the fear of dying because he knows that you are struggling to become saints. You are struggling to become holy. You are trying your best to be in the state of grace. So these days of Advent, I want to encourage everybody okay, uh, to, to try to accompany Our Lady. Accompany Our Lady. Imagine this pregnant woman, by the way, by the way, I want to show you this because this is what I keep with me now. See, that is a stampita, uh, an image of Our Lady, pregnant. It's a very nice uh, image of Our Lady to keep, um, you know, and, 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 uh, and, and <laughs> have in front of you uh, in your work desk or wherever you are. I keep this in front of me, uh, my computer desk and my, my work desk. It helps remind me of Our Lady as she's anticipating the birth of our Lord. See? So accompany Our Lady. Talk to her very often. Put yourself in, in the heart and mind of Our Lady and, and, and imagine what could she be telling Jesus during these days? What could she be experiencing within her as maybe she's massaging that, that tummy, right? Keeping Jesus comfortable inside there, you know, as, uh, uh, you know, keeping him warm. Or what, what could Our Lady be telling Jesus? All of the sweet, loving little nothings, right? That Our Lady might be telling Jesus, you can do the same thing. You accompany Our Lady and tell Jesus the same things. How much you are trying to anticipate His arrival. How much you are longing for His, for His coming. How much you, 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 would, you would want Him to be here already so that He reigns in your hearts. Talk to Our Lady. Talk to Our Lady. Learn from her purity. Learn from her piety. Learn from her holiness. Learn from her obedience, by the way, because she is the most obedient creature who said yes to our Lord when, when, when uh, she learned about her vocation to be the mother of God, right? That obedience, that docility, docility, the humility to accept the will of God without being cocky and, you know, like Zacharias who said, well, how is that going to happen? I'm an old man. No, our lady isn't. Eh? So, let us not be cocky. Let us be humble. Let us be pious. Let us be pure. Let us be obedient like Our Lady. And by the way, uh, today also, December 8th, the year of St. Joseph is ending, which was proclaimed by St. Francis, I mean, St. Francis, Pope Francis last year, right? The year of Our Lady. It began December 8th last year, so it's ending this year. But, huh? Sorry? The year of St. Joseph. Joseph. Yeah. So, but let's not make it end for us. Okay? Let us not make it end for us. Let us continue that devotion to St. Joseph. And with St. Joseph, accompany Our Lady. And, and with you there, imagine yourself uh, in between Our Lady and St. Joseph. Maybe walking, walking to, the, to, to, uh, to Bethlehem uh, to, to accompany Our Lord uh, to give birth. So... Have that devotion. Continue that devotion to St. Joseph, even if the year of St. Joseph is ending. Okay? These are all very beautiful sentiments, beautiful thoughts, beautiful things to consider uh, as we inch our way closer to the birth of our Lord during this Advent season. 
So let's give thanks to the church for proclaiming this dogma of faith of the Immaculate Conception. And let us ask Our Lady to help us be obedient, be pure, be pious and holy as she is. Okay, and if you want to help other people uh, uh, learn more about the Catholic faith and about the message of the gospel, well, join us in this podcast. We try to do it every day. Um, and, um, you know, we, this is the way I teach my kids about, um, about our faith, about the doctrines of the faith, about the message of the gospel. And you can always be part of this journey. You can always be part of our family's journey in understanding our faith and um, um, doctrines of faith and how to live our faith daily in, in our lives. So spread the word, you know. Uh, first, you like and subscribe uh, this podcast wherever you're hearing this, whether it's on Facebook or on YouTube. And go ahead and spread, spread the word. Tell your friends about it and share it on your social media. Okay? And that way, you will have done a great favor to, to your friends and family too. Okay, that'll be it for us. Let's go. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. St. Michael, St. Raphael, St. Gabriel, who announced this to Our Lady. Pray for us. Um, uh, St. Joseph, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.